keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live in you and you will live on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. And once again, to all of our uh, moms, a very happy Mother's Day to you. And we're just offering uh, prayers of thanksgiving during this Mass for your vocation as uh, mothers, that you have uh, followed that vocation so well, otherwise probably wouldn't be here at Mass uh, today. And if you're visiting today, you find yourself here <coughs> for whatever reason or been away for a while and you're here today, a very warm and cordial welcome to you on behalf of our whole parish community. And while you're here, I hope you understand how much you really belong and are loved and the whole community appreciates your presence here today, and we thank God uh, for it. All three scriptures today speak of the Holy Spirit. And I, uh, Jesus said that he will not leave us orphans, but that he will send another advocate, a helper, that being the Holy Spirit. God, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, who you have received, in the sacraments of baptism and confirmation of the Holy Spirit who lives within you. The person of God that lives within. We're going to take a, a look now at some of the fruits of the Spirit dwelling within us, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Just by way of illustration, just think about the uh, fruit section at uh, Publix. Go there, and, and I go almost every day because I never make a list. I just go, and then I get home, I realize what I don't have, and I go back the next day. But anyway, the fruit section, you have strawberries and blueberries, apples, oranges, bananas, and all kinds of other fruit. And we just expect to find them in Publix or any grocery store. But we don't often remember all the people who planted, pruned, fertilized, picked, packed that food along the uh, food chain to get to our homes. 
the fruit that we enjoy, and by the way, somebody says, I don't enjoy fruit, I don't eat fruit. You should eat fruit. <laughs> the uh, fruit that we do enjoy is the result of labor. Something is similarly uh, true of spiritual fruit. It's the result of labor. But when it comes to uh, growing this kind of fruit, that is, pay attention to what I'm saying over there. When it comes to this kind of fruit, it's the Holy Spirit who does the lion's share of the labor, of the work. Sometimes the pruning that the Holy Spirit does comes in the form of a gentle nudge as he urges us perhaps to change a certain behavior. But in every case, it's the Holy Spirit who's moving us and the Holy Spirit asks us to respond to his movements within our heart. Sometimes we can't make the big, big steps he might be leading us to, but allow the Spirit at least to help you make small steps in correcting a behavior or going towards something greater. At the same time, the Holy Spirit within us is reminding us that his grace is always available to us. We might call this grace, it's sometimes called actual grace. It means the Spirit giving the particular gift we need at the moment to do what he's calling us to do. Sometimes people are surprised by it, how often I've had uh, someone tell me, I never thought I would have the ability to take care of my spouse for years and years. But the Lord gave it to me, that ability, when I needed it. It's actual grace, the Spirit at work in that moment. And we can rely on this grace, even as it uh, requires an effort on our part to grow the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Jesus promises us the Spirit. We heard it in today's Gospel from the 14th chapter of St. John. So what are the different fruits of the Holy Spirit? Uh, Joey, can you put that up for me, please? So in uh, his letter to the Galatians, St. Paul lists the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy. Joy is an important one because I've known people, uh, churchy people, that are just grouchy and they look mean. And it's a sign to me that the Holy Spirit and his fruits are not alive in that person. Love, joy, peace, patience, the fruit, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. By the way, in regard to joy, if you notice in that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, when the uh, people in that city in Samaria receive the Holy Spirit, it says the whole town was filled with joy. Perhaps uh, today, you can focus on the spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit of peace. A lot of people are agitated. A lot of people are just in turmoil. But the being filled with the Holy Spirit can have that fruit of peace. Reflect even right now about how the Holy Spirit within you 
knows every concern of your heart right now. He knows every concern, every anxiety, every worry about your future. Now let that truth that he knows these things bring you greater peace by surrendering to him, trusting him. Maybe the Holy Spirit is asking you this morning to let go of some particular worry and to trust that he's there for you. Or maybe he's asking you to find a little extra time today to be with him. It's not enough to just go through a quick prayer or even to come to Mass, although the Mass is the summit, the greatest of all prayers. But even apart from Mass, we have to carve some time to just simply be with the Lord who is within us. Whatever it is, know that as you respond to the Holy Spirit, you'll find greater peace and you will become a more visible sign of Christ alive in the world. Like I said, you're a grouchy person. You're not being a sign of Christ in the world. You're always filled with anxiety. You're not being a sign of Christ in the world who promises us that he'll take care of us one way or the other. Perhaps coming to receive Holy Communion today, the true and real body and blood, soul and divinity, this intimate moment between ourselves and God, when we take in not just a symbol, but we take in the living body and blood of Jesus Christ to our hearts, to our bodies. Maybe we could keep praying something like this over and over as we walk up. Holy Spirit, help me to bear fruit, spiritual fruit that will remain. Please stand.